Whether you call them the Hawk or Rompin' Ronnie, Ronnie Hawkins was one of a kind. Born in the segregated South, Hawkins fell in love with rock and roll and the blues, watching black shoeshine kids in his father's shop. On a weekend, they practice in the back of the barber shop. So I'd go back there and listen to them, man, and hear that blues and all that stuff. I fell in love with it, and I said, I couldn't sing it, right? After limited success, Conway Twitty suggested Hawkins try Canada. I came to Canada redneck outlaw, made $3 million, and spent five, and didn't have to go to the penitentiary. There's a reason he's been called the godfather of Canadian rock and roll. He ends up on Young Street playing all those places like the Brown Derby and the Cockdoor and a variety of others. And it was through the, that, uh, those, those gigs that he helped create what was the early Canadian, the nascent Canadian rock and roll sound. He had an eye for talent, recruiting a young Robbie Robertson and Levon Helm and others into his backing band, The Hawks. He worked them hard. That's why I booked seven days a week and we practice five because it keeps you out of trouble. It keeps you from wasting what little money you got, you know, by having too much time and it gets you better. Eventually striking out on their own as the band, seen here with Hawkins in the last waltz. Talking with Hawkins was a trip into rock and roll history, whether it was convincing John Lennon and Yoko Ono to embrace the Canadian winter, Rambling Ronnie, mm -hmm. Rockabilly, mm -hmm. got us some skidoos and we were out skidooing this morning. And it's really beautiful. A rocking out with legends at a party for President Bill Clinton. Jeannie Becker first met Ronnie as a teen. While he didn't have many major hits, she says his real talent was giving back. He was such a beautiful soul. Such a good person. He just wanted to promote people. Ronnie Hawkins was 87. Eli Glasser, CBC News, Toronto.